land is your land, and this land is my land, from the California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. Thank you all for coming tonight. I think this is the most people I've ever seen here. So I'm so glad you're here on a Tuesday night. Uh, and uh, Next slide, please. So if any of you ever heard me talk about sustainable economic development, you know that the first line in my slideshow is, austerity is a lie. And I'm still saying that because if you remember a few years ago, particularly under Brewer and Pierce, they kept saying, oh, Arizona, we just don't have any money, so of course we have to cut public education, right? Because that's the biggest part of the pie, so let's cut that, it doesn't matter. And what they were forgetting was that the second biggest part of the pie in the state of Arizona was all the services that are related to poverty. And why do we have so much poverty? Because we're cutting services for the poor, we're cutting child care ta tax credits, tax uh, subsidies, we're cutting public education, and we're forcing more people to live in poverty because of our bad policies. And so tonight, you know, uh, Randy gave the top level view, and I'm gonna go into some specifics regarding what we did in, this, in the legislature, in the 53rd uh, legislature, legislature in 2017 and 2018. So uh, at the beginning of 2017, we saw lots of tax giveaways coming at us, and I had run on a platform of attacking the tax giveaways and I didn't actually realize that there was going to be other people who felt the same way that I do when I got there and in fact there were a number of progressives who were elected and when these tax giveaways started coming at us uh, I was sitting next to a Sayla Blanc and she goes I hate this stuff and I said I hate this stuff too she goes I ran on taking it down and I said I did too and she says you know what we should vote no on every tax giveaway until the schools are fully funded and i said high five sister that's what we're doing <laughs> and that's what we did <laughs> next slide so the first the first big tax giveaway bill that we were presented with in 2017 in february was dubbed the greenhouse bill because this was going to uh benefit one company that had greenhouses large greenhouses 100,000 square foot greenhouses, and they wanted them reclassified as personal property instead of real property. So what's the big deal? Well, if they're real property, like a corporate corporation owns a building, you're, we are assumed that the building gets uh, improved upon and that property tax rate goes up as that building improves and the business grows. But if it's personal property, it's depreciated. So these people would be paying less taxes. So Okay, less taxes, that's not good, but who does it hurt? It hurts the rural school, school districts. And so again, Say LeBlanc and I, we sat behind Drew John, and I've said on Facebook, he was my favorite Republican, because he turned around and he said, Blanc, Powers Hanley, how are you going to vote on this? And we're like, meh. He goes, it's going to hurt the rural schools. It's going to hurt Graham County. It's proposed for Santa Cruz County, but it's going to hurt all those rural schools because all those grow-ups uh, that are, have those big greenhouses are gonna take that deduction. So you can see, there's a few quotes I have up there. Mark Cardenas stands up and he says, members, I'm asking you to be groundbreaking. I'm asking you to stop giving these taxes away, right? And some loudmouth from LD9 says, a Marana mom came to me at an event and she was livid about the proposed Pima County Marana school board deal that to benefit Monsanto greenhouses. She said that money should be going to our schools, it should not be going to corporations. And we heard this over and over and over again. So, next slide. So, unbeknownst to any of us, that we killed the greenhouse bill. You know, I was so excited. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, again, I thought that I was going to be the only one preaching this when I got there, and I realized that there were Democrats and Republicans who were tired of giving money away. So another big bill, next slide, that we had was the Raytheon bill in 2017. And this one has a several, maybe a 20-page document, the link's at the bottom from the JLBC, that details all the stuff that was big giving, oh, given away with this. It would have benefit only corporations with 2,000 or more employers. 
This is going to be like five or six corporations in the entire state. So not only does it take money out of the schools, it does nothing for small local businesses, and we know that's really where our growth is in the future. So a lot of, of uh, things in that bill. Next slide. And it went down. It went down on a bipartisan vote. And it was amazing. Again, you know, I mean, the, to look at the, the look on... Allen's, uh, John Allen's face and Mesnard's face, they had their heads down, they're like, how did this happen? You know? <laughs> Next slide. So, no bad bills ever die in the Arizona legislature. The Raytheon bill came back as the Intel bill a few weeks later. So, the Raytheon bill went down on March 2nd, and the, uh, the uh, Intel bill came back on the very last day in 2017, which was May 10th. And so, it was scaled back quite a bit scaled back from the original one, wasn't quite as bad, but again, you know, we are giving away taxes, you know, and so you say LeBlanc stands up and says, we are willing to throw millions of dollars away at any corporation, even though that they are profit, profiting hand over fist. Despite their record profits, we, the state of Arizona, to continue to give them money. And what was Mesnard's thing? Not taking something is not giving it away. That's the Republican line. Forgoing it in the future is not such a, you know, not such a big deal. So next slide. So this passed, but if you look at this slide and the Raytheon bill slide, there is a lot of flipping back and forth between green and red on this. Many Democrats thought, wait a minute, why are we doing this? And they changed their votes to no for this. And many Republicans were pulled into line by their party. And so, Next slide. So what changed between May and March? Well, what changed was we had budget night in 2017. And on budget night, uh, the Democrats have these little teams, these little debate teams. And so we all have it, what we're gonna say, and uh, Issa LeBlanc, Mark Cardenas, and I were on the tax giveaway team. So about three o'clock in the morning, we're trying to be eloquent to talk about this stuff. But um, what was different in 2017 that really made the difference, in my opinion, was that there, Besides just the regular reporters that were there, we had some, a couple of reporters from the Center for uh, Investigative Reporting, and they uh, released a huge report after budget night detailing all the tax giveaways that are on your list. They had a giant Excel spreadsheet, and then the you-know-what hit the fan because the rest of the media woke up and said, oh my gosh, they did the work, and look how much money we're giving away. And so that made a big deal. Next slide. The, the, oh, well, I linked it on that slide. I linked it on the slide. Yeah, see right down there. It was, it was in the news, but a lot like the Arizona Republic and the Arizona Daily Star and a few others uh, locally quoted this, and then it was the jumping off for it. It was really the real document that said, we're giving away $13 billion and we're only losing $9 billion to run the state. So that was a big deal when that hit. Next slide. Here's some more quotes of us being eloquent on budget night. And the first one is David Luhan. I'm going to try to read that. He was talking, here he's talking about the university bonding bill, which forced the university to go into debt rather than giving them an appropriation. So he says, we certainly recognize the need to have world-class research universities to have a strong economy. I can't read it all the way over there <laughs> in Arizona, but we also need strong K through 12 system. Before you consider this bill, address the teacher shortage. And I'll let you read the other quotes. But the, the point is, we were fighting not to give this money away over and over and over again. And we were trying to make the case that there was another way to do things. So, oh, next slide. We'll skip that. That's that loud mouth from Monday night again. Go ahead. <laughs> but basically, the idea is there are things we should be spending the money on. And at the end of my quote is, I believe these needs are greater than giving away billions of dollars to big corporations. It's time to review the tax giveaways and determine what we can really afford. So this gets back to this, the idea that uh, Randy was talking about earlier, where we have had bills that, that propose review of these tax giveaways. Let's just go and look and see what all is in there. You know, We know that there's 330 some of them from that big long list you saw, and there's all sorts of things in there that really don't need to be, need to have tax uh, breaks. Next slide. So, between 2017 and 2018, there was a big uh, opinion shift in the, in the public. Like I said, in January 2017, the progressives had our little pact that we were gonna vote down the tax giveaways until the schools were fully funded. 
In December 2018, when the House Democrats had their caucus meeting, we decided as a caucus that we were going to adopt that stance and we were going to fight against the tax giveaways. Now, if you look at the votes, we didn't hold 100%, but the core of the Democratic caucus voted against the majority of the tax giveaways in 2018. And then on April 2018, when Red for Ed started, that really pushed the envelope because you guys, you guys got into the, into the mindset. You know? so that timeline is a big deal. It's only like a year and a half, really, from January 2017 to, to Red for Ed. And we are so grateful to you all for putting that into the public mindset. And when I go door to door, people hate those tax giveaways. So anyway, so next slide. So, but what happened was the tax giveaways kept continuing to come at us. And so uh, the first one up there, uh, 2479, was uh, tax exemption for digital goods. When the House passed this, we had no idea how much this was going to cost us. After we passed it, or after the Republicans with a few Democrats passed it, it was estimated to cost us $140, billion, $140 million initially and then to grow exponentially as more things are purchased online. So that was a really big, uh, big uh, tax hit for the future. So it passed the House, but it was not heard in the Senate. The next one is uh, 2459, that's the uh, income tax child credit. This is a terrible bill, about $90 million worth of terrible. Proposed by uh, Representative Mosley, who's been in the news lately for driving safely, right? And uh, <laughs> so this this would not have only increased the tax cred tax um, credit for um, your children, but also your stepchildren and your uh, foster children and all of their relatives. And so if you had like say you had six foster children and it was going to cover all their relatives, dude, that is a huge thing, ninety million dollars. Even his own party didn't like that one. So that one got voted down twice in the House and didn't go any farther. The next one, 2528, is a capital gains income tax proposed by Speaker Mesnard. Passed the House, didn't get heard in the Senate. 2217, the diaper bill again, that died in committee. It, didn't, it uh, was taken off the agenda in the Health Committee because five women were ready to vote against it. The Republicans were going to vote against it because they didn't like the price tag. And the Democrats were going to vote against it because we said there was a better way to help poor women without an across-the-board tax exemption that would take a two-thirds vote to get rid of in the future. Uh, the next one, 2568, affordable housing. This one's like the diaper bill. It sounds great, right? Let's give a tax credit. No, why don't we just fund an affordable housing program rather than giving somebody a tax break to do it, right? Next one, 2377, uh, it's another tax credit for school supplies. Again, why don't we just fully fund the education and then we don't have to give a tax credit. Uh, and the last one, you'll notice, the last one is the only one that got signed into law, and that's the coal. Now, we had other things, but I think this is a pretty impressive list of stuff that we stopped. <laughs> Next slide. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the, the digital goods. Again, this is one that it had come up on budget night on, in 2017. Mark Cardenas said, we should really look at taxing digital goods to raise, re raise revenue. And then 2018, what do they do? They switch it around and say, no, let's gonna, we're going to exempt them all. And so one of the reasons that the Senate stopped it was that there was a Supreme Court decision that was in the works, and so, uh, which was a good idea. So June 2018, a month after our voting, uh, the Supreme Court said that states were allowed to tax digital goods. So it was good that we didn't exempt them preemptively. And so, uh, next slide. So this shows the uh, this shows the House vote approving uh, the exemption of digital goods. And again, there's Democrats and Republicans on both sides of that vote. And I'm really glad that the Senate decided not to hear it. Next slide. So we also had a lot of reform bills that we proposed. And so you'll recognize some familiar names up there. There's the first couple are um, tax credit uh, review uh, proposed by Farley. So this would have set up a committee to review the, the tax credits to see which ones we should keep and which ones we should get rid of. The next one is a sunset date, adding sunset dates, also proposed by Farley. Uh, the next one proposed by Cardenas would have, um, uh, have pre, it, say in the future, that uh, there should be sunset repeals on all the bills, which I agree with. If we're going to have a tax giveaway, 
we should have a sunset on it because right now it takes a two-thirds vote to take it down and if it's a if it's a tax exemption or a tax cut that is by citizens initiative it takes a three-quarters vote which is why we all have to pay attention to what the realtors are doing with their initiative on the ballot in November because they want to preemptively exempt all services from taxes and so because right now services are not taxed and so we have to watch out for that because that's going to be a lot of money and probably Randy might be able to tell you more details on exactly how much but this is the sort of thing we really have to watch out for. Uh, the next one, the uh, 2573 corporate minimum tax, so that's Dr. Freeze's bill, that one, I, you know that 75% of corporations in Arizona only pay the $50 minimum and this would have raised that. And then there's a whole list of Dr. Freeze's bills about the STOs, again like he said, those are, those are taking money out of our coffers also. Next slide. And we also had repeal bills. And you'll notice Freeze and I are up on this one. We each proposed a bill that would outline a couple of, of those tax giveaways, the ones that are on your big list, and say, okay, maybe these are ones we don't need. And we did this, or I did this anyway, as a demonstration project to show uh, we shouldn't just be stopping the new ones, we should be identifying some of these old ones. And so his, uh, his selected exemptions repeal was uh, the uh, service contracts, sales of motor vehicles to people who are non-residents, livestock and poultry feed and vitamins, and the infamous four-inch pipe, right? And so mine, mine, we, mine, I also had the service contracts, but I also had uh, getting rid of the tax exemption on paramutual betting, and I had increasing the corporate tax rate from 4.9 to 5.5, and so that's another way of changing the corporate tax. So this is only taking it back to 2016. But still, it would save us some money. I was trying to get just, let's do a baby step, right? Let's just go back two years on this. And then the last one was creating a transaction privilege tax, which this is a Robin Hood tax. If you've heard about the Robin Hood tax at the national level, we actually used to have this until the 60s. And so this is a teeny weeny fee on, on um, trading stocks and things like that. But it, at the national level, it would raise billions of dollars. And what we were trying to see is, what would this uh, raise on the, on the statewide level? Next, next slide. So be the change you guys want. Because <laughs> again, we got this far because you all paid attention, right? People were reading the newspaper, people were looking at social media, Red for Ed happened out in the streets and, and out in the, in the chamber. And so you guys have the power. You really do have the power. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to educate. I want you to tell your friends and neighbors what the state legislature is doing. Most people don't, they're, they're so distracted with Trump that they're not paying attention to Phoenix, and Phoenix is screwing with your lives too, right? On a very intimate level. Uh, ask, ask all the Democratic and Republican candidates where they stand on these tax giveaways. Well, I was at the LD3 debate uh, a few weeks ago, and that was one of the questions, and I think we should be asking both Democrats and Republicans, where do you stand on this stuff? Uh, look, look behind the sound bites and the memes. Again, because some of these bills sound great, but they're really not great when you look at the economics. Review and repeal. We really need to push this idea of reviewing all these tax giveaways and setting some up for a repeal. And again, it takes a big effort because if, if it's just a regular one, it's two thirds. If it's a citizen's initiative, it's three quarters vote. And so it's hard to do. So, but we need to push them. Uh, sunset. Again, I think we need to have these sunset days on any, sunset uh, dates on any new ones. And I would say five years. Some people are saying ten years. Let's say five years and justify it if you want more than that. Um, suggest. Again, this is something you guys are going to be doing later on tonight with your, uh, your group uh, talks, is suggest which tax giveaways you think we could do away with. Because it's much more powerful if you tell us, hey, I don't think that these people should be getting a uh, tax break on on storing their jets in Arizona when if I store my uh, furniture I have to pay sales tax but this guy's storing his jet and he doesn't pay any prop any sales tax for storing his jet here so there's a lot of things that are unfair these are tax breaks that either um, benefit a corporation or benefit a some a group of rich people and not you guys and not definitely not your schools and lastly of course is vote and tell everybody to vote because the only way we're going to do a lot of this is changing the legislature. And again, you can see there's bipartisanship on both sides. 
Barbara, thank you. She says she's both. <laughs> so, but anyway, so anyway, it's it's not just about in some. I hate it when people say this, it, but it's not just about D's and R's. You saw all those votes were bipartisan votes, all on the yes and the no. So you have to be an informed voter and ask questions, and that's it. This land is your land, and this land is my land, from the California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. As I went a walk in that ribbon of highway, I saw above me that endless skyway. Saw below me that golden valley This land was made for you and me I roamed and rambled and I followed my footsteps To the sparkling sands of her diamond deserts All around me a voice was sounding This land was made for you and me 